Now, the first animal we went to look for was the Komodo dragon lizard. Now, of all the endangered animals we went to look for, it was probably, in many ways, the least endangered <laughs> because on the island on which they, these live, there are about 1,500 of them that live on the island of Komodo. Now, these are giant, giant man-eating lizards the biggest one I saw was about 12 feet long. Head comes up to about here. <laughs> they're thought to be the origin of the Chinese dragon myth because they are giant lizards. As I say, they're man-eaters. Quite seriously, they're man-eaters. Um, they don't actually breathe fire, but they do have the worst breath of any creature known to man. <laughs> And you might be forgiven for thinking that it's any other animal on Komodo that is really more endangered than it is. <laughs> but anyway, we went, to, we went along to look for them. And I have to say that the island of Komodo, it's not enough that it has 1,500 man-eating dragons marauding around on it. Just to make it a little bit interesting, it also has on it more, more species of poisonous snake than any equivalent area of land anywhere on Earth. <laughs> so we approached the island of Komodo, which is in, uh, in, uh, in Indonesia. We approached Komodo rather nervously, <laughs> and in a kind of roundabout kind of a way. In fact, we went by such a roundabout route that we actually went via Melbourne, <laughs> uh, because we wanted to try and get some advice. Now, the passage I want to read about this I need to apologise in advance um, for the fact that my Australian accent isn't very good, but then, <laughs> what the hell, you're all Germans anyway, you're not going to know the difference, are you? <laughs> um, there is in Melbourne a man who probably knows more about poisonous snakes than anyone else on earth. His name is Dr. Struan Sutherland, and he has devoted his entire life to a study of venom. And I'm bored with it, he said when we went along to see him the next morning. Can't stand all these poisonous creatures, all these snakes and insects and fish and things, wretched things biting everybody. And then people expect me to tell them what to do about it. I'll tell them what to do. Don't get bitten in the first place. That's the answer. <laughs> I've had enough of telling people all the time, hydroponics, now that's interesting. Talk to you all you like about hydroponics. Fascinating stuff. Growing plants artificially in water. Very interesting technique. We'll need to know all about it if we're going to go to Mars and places. Where did you say you were going? Uh, Komodo. Well, don't get bitten, that's all I can say. <laughs> and don't come running to me if you do, because you won't get here in time. <laughs> and anyway, I've got enough on my plate. Look at this office, full of poisonous animals all over the place. See this tank? It's full of fire ants, little venomous little creatures. What are we going to do about them? Anyway, I've got some little cakes in, in case you are hungry. Do you like some little cakes? I uh, can't remember where I put them. There's some tea, but it's not very good. Sit down, for heaven's sake. So, you're going to Komodo. Well, I don't know why you want to do that, but I suppose you have your reasons. <laughs> there are 15 different types of snake on Komodo, and half of them are poisonous. The only potentially deadly ones are the Russell's viper, the bamboo viper, and the Indian Cobra. The Indian Cobra is the 15th deadliest snake in the world. And all the other 14 are here in Australia. <laughs> That's why it's so hard for me to find time to get on my hydroponics, all these poisonous snakes all over the place. And spiders, the most poisonous spider is the Sydney funnel web. We get about 500 people a year bitten by spiders. A lot of them used to die, so we had to develop an antidote to stop people bothering me with it all the time. <laughs> Took us years. Then we developed the snake bite detector kit. Not that you need a kit to tell you when you've been bitten by a snake. You usually know. <laughs> but the kit is something that will detect what type you've been bitten by so you can treat it properly. Would you like to see a kit? I've got a couple here in the venom fridge. Let's have a look. Oh, look, the cakes are in here too. Quick. <laughs> Quick, have one while they're still fresh. Fairy cakes, I baked them myself. <laughs> he handed round these snake venom detection kits and his home-baked fairy cakes and retreated back to his desk, where he beamed at us cheerfully from behind his curly beard and bow tie. 
We admired the kits, which were small, efficient boxes, neatly packed with tiny bottles, a pipette, a syringe, and a complicated set of instructions that I wouldn't want to have to read for the first time in a heart panic. And, <laughs> and then we asked him how many of the snakes he'd been bitten by himself. Ah, none of them, he said. Another area of expertise I've developed is that of getting other people to handle the dangerous animals. <laughs> Won't do it myself. Don't want to get bitten, do I? You know what it says on my book jacket? Scob hobbies, gardening with gloves. Fishing with boots, travelling with care, that's the answer. What else? Well, in addition to the boots, wear thick, baggy trousers and, prop, and preferably have half a dozen people tramping along in front of you making as much noise as possible. <laughs> the snakes pick up the vibrations and get out of your way, unless it's a death adder, otherwise known as the death adder, which just lies there. People can walk right past it and over it and nothing happens. I heard of 12 people in a line walking over a death adder and the 12th person accidentally trod on it and got bitten. <laughs> Normally you're quite safe if you're 12th in line. You're not eating your cakes. Come on, get them down here. There's plenty more in the venom fridge. <laughs> we asked apprehensively if any of the folk remedies or potions we'd heard about were any good. Well, nine times out of ten they'll work fine for the simple reason that nine snake bites out of ten the victim doesn't get ill anyway. It's the last 10% that's the problem and there's a lot of myths we've had to disentangle about snakes in order to get at the truth. You need accurate information. People's immediate response to snake bites is often to overreact and give the poor snake a ritual beating. which doesn't really help in the identification. <laughs> if you don't know which exact snake it was, you can't treat the bite properly. Uh, well, in that case, I said, um, uh, could we perhaps take a snake bite detector kit with us to Komodo? Ah, of course you can, of course you can. Take as many as you like. <laughs> Won't do you a blind bit of good because they're only for Australian snakes. <laughs> so, so what do we do if we get bitten by something deadly then, I asked. He blinked at me as if I was stupid. <laughs> well, what do you think you do, he said. You die, of course. That's what, <laughs> That's what deadly means. But what about cutting open the wound and sucking out the poison? I asked. Well, rather you than me, he said. <laughs> I wouldn't want a mouthful of poison. Shouldn't do you much harm, though, and snake toxins have a high molecular weight, so they won't penetrate the blood vessels in the mouth the way that alcohol or some other drugs do. And then the poison gets destroyed by the acids in your stomach. But it's not necessarily going to do you much good either. I mean, you're not likely to be able to get much of the poison out, but you're probably going to make the wound a lot worse trying. And a place like Komodo it means you quickly have a seriously infected wound to contend with as well as a leg full of poison. Septicemia, gangrene, you name it, it'll kill you. But what about a tourniquet? Well, fine if you don't mind having your leg off afterwards. <laughs> You'd have to because if you cut off the blood supply to it completely, it'll just die. And if you can find anyone in that part of Indonesia you trust to take your leg off then you're a braver man than me. <laughs> now I'll tell you, the only thing you can do is apply a pressure bandage direct to the wound and wrap the whole leg up tightly but not too tightly. Slow the blood flow but don't cut it off or you'll lose the leg. Keep your leg or whatever bit you've been bitten in lower than your heart and your head. Keep very, very still. Breathe slowly and get to a doctor immediately. <laughs> if you're on Komodo, that means a couple of days, most time you'll be well dead. <laughs> now the only answer, and I mean this quite seriously, is don't get bitten. There's no reason why you should. Any of the snakes there will get out of your way well before you even see them. You don't really need to worry about the snakes if you're careful. Now, the things you really need to worry about are the marine creatures. What? <laughs> uh, Scorpionfish, stonefish, sea snakes, much more poisonous than anything on land. Get stung by a stonefish, the pain alone will kill you. People drown themselves just to stop the pain. Where are all these things? Ah, oh, just in the sea, tons of them. I wouldn't go near it if I were you. Full of poisonous animals. Hate them. <laughs> is there anything you do like? Yeah, he said, hydroponics. <laughs> no, I mean, is there any venomous creature you're particularly fond of? He looked out of the window for a moment. Ah, there was, he said, but she left me. 